expert here of the U.S. accounting firms in the situation with respect to China and the U.S. Jacob Franco, attorney with Shulman Rogers, joins us right here on the set. He's also a former SEC enforcement attorney. Great to have you here um, to talk about this case. First of all, this is a complicated case. Now, we've heard the general basis of the case. Now, we were talking off air earlier, and, and you did an excellent job in kind of framing the story overall because the companies here listed in the U.S., they're being asked for information. However, the accounting firms have signed an agreement basically in China saying they're not going to release this information because it's proprietary information, but that's part of the deal being listed in the U.S., so we've got a bit of an issue here not necessarily with the accounting firms, but really with the law. This is, a Phil, you're right, this is a battle of law. This is a battle of philosophy for accounting systems. And the U.S. law that's really at issue here is Sarbanes-Oxley, which says if you're going to have a company that has audited financial statements with a company that's listed in the United States, then U.S. regulators need to be able to review those audit work papers. The auditors would like to give them to, to U.S. regulators, PCAOB and the SEC. The issue here is conflict they of law. They cannot because their interpretation of Chinese law is it is prohibited. Th that kind of information comes in from affiliated auditing firms in countries around the world all the time. So you have two standards of, of basically you've, they've signed a document and in 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 agreeing to working with these companies to say we're not going to release this inf information, but at the same time you're listed here in the U.S., so you're supposed to release this information, so you're in a very catch-22. It doesn't seem to me that there's a likely solution at least in the short term, unless you can explain otherwise, what would the middle ground be in something like this? Well, the middle ground is some type of accommodation between the two agencies, but both of them seem to be moving farther and farther apart and digging in, you know, digging in their positions. And the accounting firms recognize, or the auditing firms recognize, they are caught in the middle. I think the important distinction here is when you're normally talking about SEC cases, where the SEC charges an accounting firm, it's usually about their account, how well they performed the actual audit. That's not what it's, what's at issue here. The issue here is strictly the refusal to provide records because of the conflict of the law. And all that what the SEC is asking for is not that somebody f be found to have committed violations of fraud or other provisions. It's actually just to prevent them from auditing but, and having hey, those published in the U.S. I, I mean, this is a really big deal. There are dozens and dozens and dozens of big Chinese firms listed here in the U.S. who should comply with these laws and they're not able to at this time because of the way that things have been signed. Isn't, right. this, isn't this bad for Chinese firms? Wind? Aren't you discouraging Chinese companies who want to list in the U.S.? No question about it. I mean, it raises the stakes and you would think that, you, well, from the U.S. perspective, the hope is that Chinese regulators will somehow exceed, somehow accept the U.S. perspective, but that doesn't appear to be the mindset. All right, um, we have a, it's a little bit of time left here, and I, I want you to help us explain what happens next. There's we've got people watching in Asia, and obviously uh, this is an important story. What happens next to this case that's been kind of thrown out there for now? This case was thrown into the administrative courts, not the United States federal courts. Because it's in the, it's in the administrative courts, within 30 days, we're going to see an answer of, to the legal issues, the legal allegations. 30 days. 30 days, an answer by the accounting firms. The administrative law judge has 300 days from yesterday to actually issue an opinion. So this is on a fairly fast track. Okay, let's have you back in 30 days then. Look forward to it. All right, thank you very much.